Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to hit the basic chip shot. All right, guys, before we dive into this video, I do want to let you know we have launched these uh, golf school dates for 2020 at the Bethlehem Golf Club. We're going to go ahead and put the link in the description down below. Would love for you to come spend two days with me in Bethlehem, PA this summer. Now, if you can't come for in-person coaching, would still love to coach you through CogornoGolf.com. That's our online community and membership site full of golfers like you and I looking to get better. It's where you can send in your swing videos and I can help see your swing and help take your game to the next level. You also get access to everything, including our Facebook group where you can post your swings I just mentioned. You get all of our master classes. You get the practice section, the quick fix section, and the member library on the site. Would love to see you there. On our quest to bring you the best of the best, I'm going to bring in with me in a moment Mr. Robert McMillan. Uh, Robert is a teaching professional out of the Bear Creek Golf Club in Fort Worth, Texas. He's a former European tour player. He even played in the British Open. All right, Mr. Robert, thanks for coming out here. Eric, thank you us. so much for having me. Appreciate it. We're out here at the beautiful PJ Village in Port St. Lucie. It's mm. like 80 degrees and sunny. Blue sky and palm trees. It's nice. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit here about how to hit uh, the basic chip shot. Yep. So I think the best way to go over this is let's break it down into maybe three stages. Sure. We'll do uh, some setup basics to start with. We'll do some backswing pieces and then we'll do some downswing pieces. Um, that sound good? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So let's start with setup. Now to preface this, um, when we're talking about basic chip shot, we don't need to get into how do you define chip versus pitch versus whatever. Mm. Just I'm off the green a little bit, right? And I'm gonna hit a shot from here to try and get onto the green. I got nothing fancy going on. I don't have to go over a bunker. Right. I've got reasonable lie, right? If we eliminate all those variables mm -hmm. and just how do I hit this, this basic shot, yep. let's assume we're gonna learn to do this with a sand wedge. Perfect, right? perfect. So I have a sand wedge. I wanna chip the ball from here onto that green. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hit the ball solid. Nice, Okay. that'd be nice. And then control the distance. Yeah. So <laughs> what are the things I would wanna do at my setup? To help accomplish all that. Okay, so I think the first thing we definitely want to do is where should our weight be? Yeah. And yeah. I would say that our weight should be favoring our left side. Left side. Left side. So right. if we were to put a number on that, let, let's say when I do a full swing setup. Um, now I, with my full swing setup, maybe with my short arms, I'm a little bit more there, right? I would agree with you there. Right. And so as my clubs get longer, it probably gets a little more neutral. But let's say with this, if, 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 if we call 50-50-ish with my full swing, when I'm doing my chip shot, am I looking maybe like 60? I would 65? go 60, 65 would be yeah. a good number for yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. and, and it's very important that when you're swinging it, that you keep it there. Got it, so okay. I'm, I'm starting a little left. I'm not 90, but I'm not also 50-50. I'm no. maybe 60-40-ish, maybe 70-30 would be part number one, right? Now I have some feet adjustments that I made right. compared to normal. Right. And so if this is my full swing, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm trying to get my feet closer. Absolutely, right. no question. And so I would tell most people from here um, that c closer together is better than farther apart. Yeah, no most. question when you're chipping and pitching. Yeah, I like that, closer together. Close together feet. So I've got close together feet. I got the weight a little forward. What other things would I be looking for here? So I'd be very careful here not to get too much lean of the shaft forward. Yep. Basically what that does is, we'll get into bounce at a later date, that's a 45 minute discussion of bounce. Yeah. But that tends to make the leading edge dig a little bit. Got it. So trying to get the shaft neutral yep. to slightly forward. Okay. We're not doing the Phil Mickelson hinge and hold. We are not doing that. Okay, good. He's Phil Mickelson. Right, exactly. He has a 64 degree sandwich. <laughs> You're not, and I'm not. Okay. So I'm going shaft, if this is 90-ish from mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going shaft neutral or maybe just slightly forward. Very slightly forward, yeah. I usually give as a checkpoint, do not get the shaft at or past my left thigh. So if I can keep it inside my left thigh. Right, So that somewhere between the belt buckle and the inside the left thigh. Left thigh like max, Yep. right, no more forward than that. Okay, I like that. So I've got the feet close, weight a little forward, the shaft is just maybe slightly forward or neutral. And then am I changing some distance away from the ball? The club's a little longer, obviously, than, than well, this is a sand wedge, right? Yep, yep. So, so I would say that that's a pretty good, comfortable distance away. Got it. I don't think there's any standard issue of distance away. Yep. I would certainly think that the closer you are yep. would be a lot better than being too far away. Got it. We could get into that at a later date, but I think yeah. being a little closer to the ball would definitely help. Maybe slightly closer than I would be if I was doing full yes, swing, right? no so question about that. Smidge closer like this. Yep. 
So I've got that, I got my weight for it. It might be a little closer to the ball than normal. Am I a lot of shoulder tilt, little shoulder tilt? This is a very important portion. It's a portion that a lot of people miss can, can screw here. We want to make sure with this shot that your shoulders are very level. Yeah. I think that when we go to the range, if those of uh, your viewers who like to hit balls and then go chip, got what it. I've seen tend to happen is, you know, they end up hitting balls in the range with their driver, right? Yeah. So they finish with the driver and they go, I'm going to go chip a few. So then they go to the range to chip a few and the stance is wide, yep. and not good. And we have secondary tilt, also not good for when you're playing this chip shot. We, and the driver, you have the most tilt. Of course you do right, because yeah. we're hitting it more up. So you go from this the way. most tilt to... That's right. So yeah. just remember when you go out to the chipping green, we're playing this chip shot. Once you've got those fundamentals we talked about, those are foundational principles, weight on the left, feet close together, yeah. ball in the middle of the stance, shaft fairly neutral to slightly lean forward. Yeah. Then I would say make sure that we don't have your right shoulder too much lower than your left. Now, the right hand's on the club lower than the left. It's going to want to do that. Yeah. But I would say it would be good to level that off a little bit. And we'll tell you why once we get into the in-swing portion yeah, of this. Yeah. But pre-swing stuff. Little level. Little level, absolutely. So, now, if someone's watching that, because I know for me, I had a lot of tilt, mm -hmm. okay? And I heard shoulders level. And when the guy put me into level, mm -hmm. I felt like my left shoulder was going to kiss the ground. Oh, there's no question. I mean, I felt like I'm over leading in Tower Pisa type of deal. Yeah. Now, to me, the goal here would be it's going to feel goofy if you don't sure normally do that. Yep. If you're not hitting it solid, you got to make some adjustments. Use a video, use a mirror, mm -hmm. right? So that you have to feel whatever you need to feel to get it to level. If someone tilts too much, they in all likelihood are going to have to feel like they just ripped their, shoulder, like their shoulders down here. Yeah, right? when you've done something for so such a long period of time yeah. and you've always felt that, that to me, when you go completely the other way, will feel like this, but it's not. When you look at it and go, oh my gosh, I thought I was like this. Yeah. And then you look at it in video, I'm level. And the key is you gotta look at it. Have to look at it. Yeah, you have to look yeah, at that confirm that. So that's beautiful. I see 90 plus percent people with too much tilt. Absolutely. it's a humongous part of that. So if someone wants to chip it solid and they could get their feet close, get a little closer to the ball. I personally don't care much about how someone grips up or not. I think I'd rather them grip down the club more than not at all, but that's, I think, not as relevant. Agreed. But a little closer to the ball, shaft is neutral. If they could get their shoulders level, get their feet close, and get closer to the ball. Those great, that's things. a great start. Ah. That's that, you, you are driving your car from the driver's seat yeah. and not trying to drive it from the passenger seat. Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> it's a great way to start. Those right? three things would be the most important. So I'm going to chip one. I'm not worried about the flag here. I'm just going to go middle of the green. And I'm going to confirm that. My feet are close. I feel closer to the ball than normal. And I'm going to feel like my shoulders are level. Now, that... Does that guarantee life on the line that I'm going to hit it solid? No, there's no. still some pieces we got to talk about. But it's off to a great start. So let me chip one here. Shoulders level, feet close, closer to the ball. And that was just kind of a basic chip shot. Very so good, very good. That would be um, a starting point. But let's talk a little bit about the backswing pieces. All right, so we have the setup pieces. Let's talk a little bit about the backswing pieces. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm that same golfer who wants to just hit it solid, right? I want to get the ball on the green. What are some baseline ideas for me for the backswing? Right, so we are hitting a shot that's getting lift in it. Yes. And it's very, very important that we, as we swing back, we add loft to the club. And for the viewers out there that doesn't understand what lo adding loft to the club would be, yep. would mean that the toe is starting to point up word. Yep. So that would we call deviation. To make it very simple, you've just added loft to the club there. That's a good thing if you want to get the ball up in the air. Yeah. This would be a very bad thing, right? right? Exactly. So when I see and play with some amateurs in some of these pro-ams and they're playing a shot that requires loft, they look down at the sand wedge and it's got 60 degrees or 56 degrees of loft and then they take it back and they actually de-loft it. Yes. And then they're thinking, how, why did the ball not get up in the air? I'm using <laughs> right. a 56 degree wedge. Well, it's because you didn't add loft come back. So one of those foundational principles of a backswing for a normal little easy pitch or chip shot would be as we swing back, yeah. the handle and the head move together and the toe gets pointing more upwards towards the sky. Got it. Right, that's adding a little bit of loft to the club. And you can yeah. see simply, you've just got a little wrist hinge yeah. and the toe's pointing more upwards. And I think that's a beautiful two key things here yep. is number one, when I go back, well, I guess it would be number one, club head and shaft 
for the first couple of inches, certainly. Let them move together. Let them move together. It, it wouldn't be Same a, rate. Wouldn't be a great thought. People think, well, I've got to give it lift. I better cock my wrists early. Right. And the, no, this is way ahead of here. We create dig, we call that. Yep. But where if it starts a little more this way, then it starts to deviate. I think that would give the average person who's learning to play oh. a basic chip shot such a good feeling coming through the golf ball. 100%. Really I, I think really what, would. what I would use as a checkpoint there would say club head and grip, feeling as though they're moving together until the butt of the club gets probably at or just past the right leg. Beautiful. Thigh. Beautiful. And then once I get to that spot, I'm going to gradually, I'm not just going like this, I'm going to gradually be adding hinge as the butt of the club's still moving. Oh, of course it is. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm gradually adding a little hinge, and then I'm getting to my second checkpoint, which I would say from here, a, a nice stock thing would be to get it mostly toe up, right? Or right. a little, even maybe on this side of it. We want to avoid having the toe down, which we, I like for full swing stuff. Oh, it's great for full swing. Yeah. We want that. We want that leading edge matching your spine angle in full swing. Yeah. But not you, here. No, you're, this is yeah. different from a full swing. This yes. is a little chip shot or pitch shot. We would want to add a little bit of loft going back to get that toe up, yeah. which you would also do the same in the bunker. Perfect. I wouldn't do it with a driver. Perfect. So yeah, I wouldn't do it with a driver either. No. No. So, okay. When I go back, I'm thinking butt of club and club head, and me working together until I get past my right leg, soft hinge. Now, again, with all this stuff, you don't need to get into that level of detail. These are checkpoints. You're looking to find one or two that can help you when you chip. But if we put together the setup and the backswing pieces, and we go over all of them, and I'm starting fresh, I would say I'm looking to, going back to the setup pieces, have my feet close. It's one. Closer to the ball. Two. Right? Shoulders level. Three. Okay. Yeah, one is let's, mostly forgotten, by the way. That's the one. The shoulder. It's mostly forgotten, yeah. So let's say I got those pretty good. Okay, I'm looking at a mirror, I'm looking at a live view, I'm good. Yep. When I go back, I'm feeling this and this, club head hands together, soft hinge until it gets to roughly toe up. And then I got to hit a ball, mm -hmm. which we'll get to in a minute or mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. But I want to try one of those. Sure. We'll go kind of middle of the green. So I'm going to feel the uh, butt of the club and the club head working together, soft hinge until it gets to toe up. Beautiful. Again, if you do that already, you don't have to think so much. I think the point is, if you don't do that, if you watch yourself do it and you see, oh, wow, I'm really toe down. Right. That's where that comes into play. We say, oh, I need to make an adjustment there. Right. I can get the toe up a little bit more. Right. And a little saying in your head, even though this is not great with a uh, three wood or a driver, but with this particular shot would be the feeling with waist high toe to the sky, depending on the length of the waist shot. Waist high toe to the sky. You know, if I'm like getting it. to waist height, I'm looking at the toe when a, with a pitch shot or a, or a longer chip shot of, of being waist high yep. toe to the sky. And I think, and, and I don't want to go on and on about this, so we'll move forward, but sure. the idea comes up all the time, how much should I hinge, should I hinge or not? There are good players who hinge very little, Jason Day, Steve Schicker. There are good players who hinge a lot. The point we're saying to stock is, hands and club head to add or pass the thigh, gradual hinge from there to Perfect. normal just to keep it neutral. Perfect. Let's talk about what you do from there down. All right, so let's talk about what we do from that backswing into impact and past impact. So. I'm still that same golfer, okay? I still want solid contact. Sure. I'm still looking to get the ball on the green in one. What would be maybe the top one to three pieces in the downswing follow through to look for? Right, so the, probably the most important part of all is making sure you don't swing to the target. Yeah. And that sounds so counterintuitive. Well, I've been taught all my life I've got to swing to the target. Well, Tony Romo throws a football, he doesn't throw it like that. <laughs> it, he throws it and it goes around to the left. Baseball swing, same tennis, thing. the same thing. It's deal. going yep. to the left. Yep. So to understand that concept, I think we have to feel yep. that as we start to come around to the front, yep. we've got, so we've done this toes up to the sky, we've got the pressure on the left, and as we start to swing down and around, we've got to feel like the center of the body, your belly button, is working in unison with the, the cap of the club, the butt of the club. That's such a good feeling on, it, on the way through to feel your chest rotate. So I need to pivot on Gotta my way pivot. through. Got to pivot. What we're not looking to do, swing down the line, meaning my club head is going to kind of excessively go this way. See how your right shoulder lowered. Yep. And your shoulders are now not very open at all. Right. So, so when you start to feel that pivot, your chest is turning and the club is exiting around your body to the left. It's such a great feeling once the students out there get that. It's yes. a wonderful feeling. So I'm coming down here. I'm thinking I'm looking big stock macro to have a pivot. So that Beautiful. would be kind of belt buckle, chest buttons, et cetera, to turn as I swing through. Now we're extending up. Now do you see how I'm you extend tall. it up? You're tall. Beautiful. Now my club head, as I pivoted, 
um, has worked to the left, mm -hmm. right? It hasn't gone down my, my club head has worked to the left as I have turned. And then my hands and my butt of the club maybe have a little finish position too that I want to get right. to. Right, so the finish position is great because teaching in Dallas, Texas, where people like to carry guns, right. whether you like that or not, that's up to you. But sure. they, you know, it's a whole, I call it the holster. Love and it's it. such a great feeling when you hit pitch shots, you see so many good players, how they're swinging to the left. Well, if you think about that and you're just trying to learn this basic pitch shot, if you could swing through and holster. Swing through and holster. Watch, yep. swing through and holster. Now I'm not going to pivot, yep. but I'm going to swing down the target line. You ready? Yeah. I don't know the last person in Dallas, Texas that carried a gun right here. Probably they carry it on their, either in their boot, Eric, yeah. or it's on the left hip. Right, so, so the feeling when you're done, the finished position tells everything. Are you finished with your arms away from your body where you have to holster in your belly button? Yep. Now pull the club back to, ooh, Got not it. good. Okay, now go ahead good. and pivot. Now holster in your hip. There it is, beautiful. So I should be able to get that butt of the club and if I kind of pulled it in towards me, it'd be kind of right by my left hip. Right by the left hip. If Got you it. watch Tiger, good, great good pitcher. pitcher. He's yeah. not bad. I mean, he's not, he got a, lot, a long he way to go. Okay. Yeah. But I think he'll do pretty well on the senior tour. Long way to go. Not a yeah. great career as a young guy, but as a senior he's tour, he might okay. be pretty good. Couple so bucks. When, he, when, you, when you see him, every, you there. never see this. Got it. You see left and holster. Left That's and holster. That left and holster. So I, I think I like, as a really general rule here, I'm, I'm doing this. Beautiful. And I'm getting the butt of the club in my lap by here. But did you notice when, if you're looking from the camera face on here, yeah. do that again and just yeah. finish and holster? Yeah. Did you notice how he went, Eric's body go up. went up. You yeah. went up to do that. You I'm didn't go here. down. So when I look at amateurs, average golfers chipping and pitching the ball, and we're a lot prone then to keeping our head down. Yes. This, is, this goes along with swinging to the target line. So now I'm going to be average golfer whose buddy says, keep your head down and swing to the target. Right. So I'm gonna do that, right? So I'm gonna keep my head down and I'm gonna swing to the target. And, and, and Tiger Woods has never looked like that in his life. And if he I did, it was by it. mistake, right? So, <laughs> so when I, you, you would say to your students who are watching, so what we're, instead of doing that, keeping our head down, we're gonna extend our body up on the exit and around, look at that. Look how your body went up. Yeah. You're not leaning back. Right. We pressured left to start with and we stay left. Beautiful. That's a great position on the exit that you're yeah. in right there. Let me do one more and see if I can put this all together. Beautiful. Now, in theory, this should be perfect, right? It will right be perfect. Yeah, you, you might make this. So if I'm going back to the beginning, I like to repeat stuff. Of course. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I am closer to the ball than normal. My feet are closer together. My shoulders are level. Level. When I make a backswing, I'm trying to keep the club head in my hands feeling as though they're the same rate for the first couple of inches kind of to my thigh. I'm gonna gradually add hinge and try and get about toe up here, not tilted down. During my downswing, I'm gonna pivot and have myself t pointing towards the target and have my butt of the club in a position where if I pulled it in, I'd be by my left hip. Those are incredibly great basics for someone that wants to learn an average regular chip shot. You wanna get fancy when opening the face and utilizing bounce, Different ball whole nother video, yep. but this, what you did in pre-swing yep. and what you did in in-swing, if you just followed that, I think the golf ball would get up in the air and with practice, you'd be able to judge how far Best odds go. for success. Best odds for success. So let me Absolutely. see if I can do one here. I'm gonna put that all together. So I'm feeling kind of same rate and I'm feeling where I'm going in my follow through. I'll just chip one kind of to the middle here. And that feels really good. Um, yeah, it's really good. For me, thank you. That's really good, yeah, yeah. So guys, Chip shot basics, as we talked about, there's a lot of different variables around the green that we can get into, but these are the basics for solidness of contact. Now, I think when you go chip and you're learning to improve your scores, solidness of contact should be the number one thing. Without that, you can't control anything else. Now, I think beyond that, learning the bump and run shot would sure, be a really nice sure. starting point, which we talked about in a separate video. And then you can get into things like landing zones, getting the ball to finish a certain spot, doing some different things that we right. can talk about later. So hopefully these things helped you. Robert, thanks again. My for pleasure. Out. Thanks. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it, Eric. Thank you. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. Since you just got done here, you're going to want to go ahead and click this in the top left-hand corner. This is the chipping versus pitching video. You're going to like it. Also, while you're here, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.